Today, we're going to be covering the top 10 most valuable Bob Feller baseball cards. They range from being produced in Canada to Japan to Venezuela. And there's also some local food and beverage cards. Guarantee that you have not seen all the cards that I will be showing you today. So if you don't know who Bob Feller is, let's do a little quick recap. A legendary pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. Led the league in strikeouts from 1938 through 41. Went off to war when he came back for his first full season in 1946. Led the league once again in 46, 47, and 48. Really, really dominant pitcher. And unfortunately, missed a lot of seasons because of World War II. Because of that, he fell short of milestones like 300 wins and 3,000 strikeouts. We're going to start off this list with number 10, which is a 1939 Gaudi Premiums. Gaudi's going to be on this list quite a few times. If you're not familiar with the brand, they were extremely popular in the 1930s. They've only had one release in the 1940s, and then after the war, they dissolved, which is a shame because they produced some really, really cool cards. Uh, this Gaudi Premium, a four goes for about $450, and they're pretty scarce. I don't see them pop up that often. Up next, we have a food card, which is the 1954 Wilson Franks. Some of these cards in the set are really, really expensive. Bob Feller is still somewhat affordable. You can find a three for about $300 and a six is $550. These were distributed with hot dogs and finding them in high grade is really tough. But another 1950s release, like I said, food and beverage cards is really taking off on this list. And that is a 1952 Num Nums. These were distributed with potato chips, and there's two different versions of this card that are graded. There's one with a tab at the bottom, and there's also one without a tab. If you're familiar with the Redmans also that year, they're kind of like that. So the one I'm going to be going over the price example with is with the tab. You can get a five for about $375 and a six for $720. should also mention that these cards were only for Cleveland players. So if you're looking for to add one of these into your PC of a different team, you're going to be out of luck. Our first foreign release on this list is for the 1967 Venezuela Retired Series. Now, there isn't many sales of this. The last sale goes all the way back to 2017, so it's not really fair to apply that price because Venezuela cards have gone up significantly, and then also we had the hobby boom. But if one went to auction today, I think like in a low grade to a one, could fetch anywhere from like $250 to 500 it really depends on eye appeal and also the back. Because a lot of these were pasted into albums. Some of them have clean backs. If they come off easily, some of them have really rough backs. So I think that's a pretty fair range, but who knows with what it would do at auction. Another foreign release from South America. We have the 1946 Propaganda's Montiel. These come straight from Cuba. Very, very thin and brittle cards. Good luck finding these in high grade. Ones are about $400. Before we get into our top five, let's go over three honorable mentions. We're going to start off with the 1952 Topps Bob Feller. Definitely not one of his more expensive cards, but it is iconic because it is from that first full Topps flagship set. There's a lot of set builders. There's also a lot of people that collect the Hall of Famers on there. So like lower grade examples, you can usually find for between like $100 and $200 threes, fours, you can find around that $300 mark. 1954 Dandies, another potato chip card on the set. They're not as rare as the Num Nums, but they are still pretty popular with collectors. You can find like mid-grade examples around the $300 mark. And lastly, 1938 Dixie Lids. I have a few Dixie Lids within my PC. I don't think I have the feller yet. These are distributed with ice cream and are actually the lids of it. Some people have cut off the tabs, the pull off. You can find a four for about the $300 mark. Back to the top five. We're going to start off with one card, which some people consider a Bob Feller rookie card. And that is, it's kind of a weird distribution. Some people say it's a 1936. Some say it's 1937. There's a few different types of it, but it's another Gaudi premium. Now, lower graded examples, one, you can pick up about like 400, maybe $500, depending on eye appeal. But when you get into higher graded ones, they become really expensive last six sold for four thousand dollars this next card is something i didn't know until researching uh bob feller cards and that is 1950 minko there was actually a japanese set produced that year that had a lot of american mlb baseball players I find it really interesting especially right after the conclusion of world war ii these are ex extremely scarce i mean a lot not a lot of them have gone over from japan to america 
The last for sale that I was able to see sold for $1,200. Real quick, if you guys want to learn even more about Bob Feller baseball cards, I have a full article to check out. You can see the link down below in the description or the comment section. In this article, we cover 26 different cards. Couldn't cover it all in the video, so make sure to check it out. This next card, a lot of people associate it with the rookie card of Bob Feller, but he does have earlier examples, like as mentioned, but that is the 1938 Gaudi. There's two different versions of it. There's one with a cartoon and also the plain background, and they both have two different card numbers. For me personally, I like the cartoon one better, but I know a lot of other people that would rather have the plain background. They think it's a little bit cheesy, but the cards do feature those big heads of the players. So it's kind of in the set. With that being said, you can find like mid-grade examples. They range from really $2,500 to $4,000. Up in the number two spot is the 1949 Leaf. I know a lot of people consider these 4849 cards. I did too for a while, but a few people reached out. Uh, with proof and videos showing that these cards were only distributed in that year. So I'm going to only be calling it 49 Leaf from now on. The Bob Feller was a short print within that set, so it's a lot tougher to find than some of the other common stars and Hall of Famers within there. An authentic example has sold for $1,800 with a five going for $4,400. I think I've only been able to see this once at a card show. I wasn't even able to see a copy at the National this year. So it's really, really tough to find. And a really cool card if you're trying to find an iconic short print from that set. And number one, most of you guys didn't predict this, but it's the 1937 Opeachy. Yes, they made baseball cards in 1937 beyond just making hockey. This card is extremely expensive. A four is about $3,500 and a seven is $10,000. Also, if you don't know, Joe DiMaggio is in that set and is quite more expensive than that Bob Feller. And yes, I have seen the Joe DiMaggio at card shows, but no, I cannot afford it. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to watch another one that talks about a really rare card from 1949 Leaf set, check out this one right here where we go over the top 10 satchel page cards.